Hey guys, what's up? Today in this video, we're going to be doing an explosion tutorial in After Effects, and this is what it's going to be looking like. So to start off, go to your desktop or anywhere, right click, make a new folder, and I'm going to name it uh, explosion assets okay and this folder you're gonna be using it for most of your stuff that we're gonna have to put in here so uh, textures and the explosion and your footage what you're gonna want to do this is gonna be a complete beginners tutorial so if you're completely new to it this is gonna be a good video for you to start with so first off in this little empty gray area double click and this will bring up uh, your files where all your footage may be. Go find your footage. Make sure you put your SD card in from whatever camera you used into your computer. Go to where your SD card is. So mine is in here. So now I can grab my footage. All right, grab my footage. So next after that, you'll want to hold down left click and drag it right into this empty gray area. What this will do is create a composition uh, with the exact size and the exact, like everything will be exact as the video. So the size will be 1920 by 1080 and the frame rate will be 30 FPS, depending on what you recorded it in. Okay, next you'll want to go to the description and download the uh, Action Essentials explosions and all the other Action Essentials spots. In the description of this video, there will be a link uh, going to the Action Essentials Explosion Pack. Uh, what you'll want to do is copy that link and paste it up here into the URL uh, and click enter. Or actually, you won't have to copy it, you can just click it. Once you're here, download it. Now after it's downloaded, drag it to your desktop and now drag it into the folder we made at the beginning of the video. Go into the folder right click it and then click extract all extract okay once it's extracted it will turn into this folder right here and it'll have all the videos so you open this folder you go to action essentials 2 and you have all the action essentials in here um, what we'll be using in this video is the explosion I'm gonna be using explosion 7 right here explosion 7 so we will be using this one but you can use any other one as long you can use any other explosion as long as it doesn't cut out of the frame like this one because if it cuts out of the frame it'll give it a really it'll give it a really weird like uh, cut crop effect it'll be cropped right here in this on the bottom and on the on the right side so you will not want to use one that like goes past the frame once you have that downloaded go back to after effects double click in the empty gray area go to the folder that we made in the beginning of the video and get the explosion. I would get explosion seven. It'll make it easier to follow along with the tutorial. Here it is, explosion seven. So now that you have this, this is the footage we'll be using. Yours will be different. So what you're gonna wanna do is go right, put the, the this is the scrubber tool. You'll wanna put the scrubber tool right where you want the explosion to happen. So I want it to happen right here. So what I'll do is I will take the, I'll hold down left click and drag it on top. If you drag it on the bottom, basically they're in layers. So the, it'll be on the bottom layer behind this and you won't be able to see it. If I drag it on top, it'll be uh, above this layer and you will be able to see it. Uh, oh, but you can't see it right now because it's, it's not, uh, the scrubber is not on it. So you'll have to drag it over right where you want the explosion to start. So right here and now in order to get rid of this the black what you'll have to do is right click your explosion footage go to blending mode click screen all right so there you go now if you want to size it down you can either go like this and try to perfectly make it or you can you can hold down left click on one of these points hold down shift and then drag and it'll make it perfectly uh, the exact perfect size that it was to begin with now this explosion is a little small for what it is so I'm gonna make it bigger about this big maybe so what you'll want to do after that after you have your explosion in is we're gonna make it want to make it the footage tracked 
So what you're going to want to do next is go to layer, new, null object, make sure that's on top. Now click your original footage, go down here where it says tracker and write and put it right before where the explosion happens. So this is my explosion footage. Make sure your original footage is selected, put it right before the explosion and click track motion. Now you'll be able to track your footage. So what you want to do next is you want to take this little track point and put it on a very sharp detailed point on your object. So let's put it right, right here would be good because it's, it's different. Like if you were to put it right here where all of it, all the color is the same, it's not very sharp detail, there's no sharp detail there, it'll slide off somewhere else. So you'll want to put it on a very solid point. So right there is really good. After you have a good solid point, you'll want to go over here where it looks like a play button and click analyze forward. All right, so now that it's crossed it, you can stop it just by clicking right there. You can see we have it all tracked. Okay, so next what you'll wanna do is go down here to the bottom right, click edit target. Make sure it's selected to null one and make sure it's null one only. Do not select your own footage or the explosion. Click okay, click apply, X and Y, which is your default and click okay. Now you have it down, now you have the, uh, track on a null object you can what you want to do next so that the explosion is tracked to your footage is you'll use this little swirl the pick whip icon hold down left click drag and place it right on top of the null object there you go all right now go to the beginning of your footage right right as the explosion happens position it what looks good to you now if if this seems to get in the way the little red box from the null object you can go over here to the left and you see this little eyeball right here, right on top of null, this little eyeball, just click it and it'll, it'll go away. Okay, so you can check it out, see if it fits. You can see the footage is tracked, the explosion is tracked. All right, so you notice this is a little bit of a sharp edge down here. In order to fix that, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna drag down your explosion just a little bit, right there would be good. All right. And basically what we're gonna use is called a mask, a mask tool. It's this little pen right up here. Make sure your explosion footage is selected. And what you'll wanna do is, is it's basically, a, it basically cuts your footage like scissors. And basically if you cut, it'll cut away your footage. It'll basically cut away your footage. So if I close it off, all right here. There you go, it, it, it leaves this part but cuts it. But let's say we want we wanted this to get cut off and this to still be here. What you do is you click this little arrow here, click the arrow by mass, click inverted, and there you go. And for this, what you'll want is you will want it to be inverted for the way we're gonna do it. So what you're gonna wanna do is delete this mask. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna click it, the mask right here, click open it, Make sure this mask arrow is open. Click on the mask and then click delete on your keyboard. There you go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is to smooth it out, this bottom sharp edge, you'll wanna make a little bit of a cut. Now make sure you check how far your explosion breaches out. So for my explosion, so it breaches out to about here. So have your little point cut right on the bottom right along here and close it all right now you notice it left this but you wanted the other part out you go here check the inverted box there you go all right next thing you want to do is click the arrow here by mask one and right here these are uh, uh, stopwatches and what this will do is it'll, it'll basically animate whatever effect you want so what you're going to want to do here is for which i'll show you later um what you're going to want to do here is you're going to turn up mask feather and it'll just smooth out the mask there you go just like that i'm going to put it at about 21 that's good all right and now you can close it off now after you've done that go up here Click the little arrow, that's your selection tool. You can click off if you don't like that. Now if you want the mask to disappear so you don't, you can't see this anymore, go right here, click that and it'll, it'll disappear. Now I can still see kind of some of the bomb. So the way you're gonna want, you just wanna fix that, just slide it down. 
All right, so there we go. We already have a bunch of it tracked. It already looks pretty good, uh, but we still have a lot more we need to do. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do next is right here on the right where it says effects and presets, in this little search bar, search glow, hold down left click and drag it right on top of your explosion footage. Now go right in the middle where the explosion is at its biggest, biggest point. There you go, okay. So now this doesn't look very good. It's very highlighted. Uh, to make it more of a realistic glow, what you'll wanna do is, so glow threshold is 47, glow radius will be good at 300, and glow intensity will be 0 0.6. That's what I'm gonna use for this. There we go. Now it does make a big difference. Here it is without the effect, here it is with the effect. Gives a little bit more of a realistic feel to it. Um, but you don't have to add it. This explosion really isn't necessary to add a glow effect. It looks pretty real by itself, but it does help touch it up right here a little bit for some of the transparent parts. Some explosions need it more than others. All right, next thing you'll wanna do is you will want to go on, uh, I don't know, Google, and you'll wanna, you're gonna wanna look for lens dirt. So go to, uh, uh, whatever you want to use, Chrome, uh, and search lens dirt. All right, images. Now I have a specific one I'm gonna use, but any of these will look really good. Now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go to your project uh, slide, and the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna click these two arrows, click project, and there you are. All right, double click in the empty gray spot, go to desktop go to your uh, explosion assets folder now I in a different one for me it's uh i put it in explosion essentials and this is the one i'm going to be using all right now you have this what you want to do is drag it right on top of the null null one now you have this there you now you're going to want this to fill the whole screen you could either go like this and try to perfectly fit it but the quickest way to do it is hold down control Hold on Alt and click F. That basically fills it up. Now remember, in order to remove the black, what you'll wanna do is right click this, go to blending mode, click screen. Now you notice it makes the, it makes the your footage look really like dirty. So what you'll wanna do to make it look not as gross, so it's more pleasing to look at. This is where I'm gonna teach you what keyframes are and what the stopwatch does. So what you'll do is you'll click this arrow on the lens dirt. Go click the arrow by transform. So this these are stopwatches. So what this will do is on the position stopwatch, if you click it right here, uh, and then you move over one, and then you move the footage, it's in a different position. It's basically like uh, stop motion in a way, but it fills in these empty frames for you. So basically what it does is create a little animation. So there you go, that's what it that's what it does. And then to undo that, just hold down control and click Z. Now we are gonna have to use some uh, keyframes for the opacity, which will basically just turn down the transparency. So I've turned this down, you can't see it anymore. If I turn it all the way up, you can see it 100%. So next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna click the uh, the stopwatch icon and you're going to want to turn this down the percentage down to eight or ten percent ten percent okay then you'll want to drag a little bit forward right before the explosion okay now you'll want to create a blink keyframe so right here this little diamond click that now you've created a blink keyframe now what you'll want to do is make it where the explosion is brightest so right, right here would be good for me. And then we'll want to turn this up maybe to about 47%. Go a little bit further in right here. Turn it to, let's say 24%. Go right here, turn it to 10, back down to 10%. Or at least close to it. All right. And I have this fake lens dirt. You can see it, a little splotch here, splotch here, a little splotch here. And it looks really natural, but the only thing that doesn't look natural is if this were uh, to be real lens dirt, it would not be this focused in. 
it would look more like this one. It'd be very blurry. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to effects and presets, get rid of that, and search Gaussian blur. You can just search G-A-U-S. It'll come up here. Don't choose the bottom one, choose the top one, hold down left click, and drag it right onto your lens dirt. Okay, now that you're here, you want to turn it to maybe about, say nine. Nine looks good. Turn it to nine. It's very subtle, but it does really help sell the effect. It makes it look like it's glowing. It makes it looks like it's actually there. Okay, uh, the next thing we will be needing is lens blur. So basically what this will do is just make the camera look like it's going out of focus. You don't want to overdo this effect because it will kind of kill it and it'll make it look quite fake if you do. So instead of using Gaussian blur, you'll want to use a uh, camera lens blur right here. Uh, but before you do that, go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And basically what this does is it's, it basically will affect all of these, all of everything underneath it. So if I add, um, um, I don't know, I'll just say, look, when we add the camera lens blur, it, it, it'll blur everything. It'll blur, blur the footage, the explosion, and the lens dirt. So what you're gonna wanna do, what, so what you're gonna wanna do is go up to blur radius, make sure that's all the way down at zero, click the stopwatch, right here, right before the explosion, go a couple frames in. And now that you're here, turn the blur radius up to about, no, that's too much. Nine was good. And then just a couple more frames in. Turn it back down to zero. Now this will render through quicker depending on how much RAM you have. So I have 24 gigabytes of RAM. If you have like a lower amount, like I don't know, eight, it'll take a little bit longer for this to render through and for you to be able to watch it. But other than that, it'll be kind of laggy. So there you go, that's what it looks like. Okay, so now you're pretty much done with most of the part, you will need a sound effect. And to sell the effect even more, you'll want a shake. If you want to know how I made the bomb, there'll be an end screen bar at the end of the video. Uh, and it'll take you to Film Rights channel and he'll show you exactly how to make it. That's where I went to go figure out how to make this. So what you'll want to do after you have, once you have everything checked out, everything looks good to you, you'll want to click this bottom, your bottom layer, which will be your footage layer. Hold down shift, and click your very top layer, which will be your adjustment layer. Next, you'll want to right click. You want to click pre-compose and click OK. Make sure move all attributes into new composition is checked. It should be on your default. All right, once you got this, uh, we're gonna we're gonna mess around with uh, the shake. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is click the arrow, click the transform arrow. Now on your keyboard, keyboard hold down Alt, click the stopwatch by position, and it'll bring this it'll bring this part up. Now what I want you to write is type wiggle bracket 10 comma 10 close bracket now it should shake around yep it is um another thing is it, if you have this on full quality when you're viewing it it'll be kind of laggy so i like to keep it at quarter i didn't notice this till now but i like to keep it at quarter so that way it's not it's not constantly laggy so now you can see and shaking around see but there are these white bars which are getting in the way uh, and in order to fix that in order to fix the white bars uh, basically what the white is is that your transparent layer so if I if I click the eyeball where you can't see the footage anymore that's your transparent layer and that's what you're seeing behind the footage so in order to make this not visible anymore you're gonna want to hold down left click on one of these points hold down shift and then drag. You're gonna wanna make this fairly big, fairly large. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do next is go to effects and presets, get rid of that. Search slider, slider control. Drag this onto your pre-comp. Okay, next what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna change this. You're gonna wanna make it wiggle, 10, comma, absolutely nothing, close bracket. 
make sure your uh, cursor point is right in between the comma and the close bracket. Okay, next what you're gonna do is go right here to the arrow under effects, go to slider control, and you'll see this slider. Now don't worry if you see this error, this will be gone once we fix this. All right, now that you have this here, click the pick whip icon, the little swirly uh, symbol, hold down left click, drag and drag it right on top of the slider. Don't drag it on top of this right here. Drag it right there, then let go. Oh, whoops. Now, when you're doing this, make sure your cursor is right in between the comma and the close bracket. There you go. And it'll come with wiggle, close bracket, 10, slash effect, slash slider curl, so on. Okay, now that you have this, you can control the wiggle with this up here. So it's at zero, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna shake around. But if you turn this up, let's say 22, which is quite a bit, it'll shake up around a lot. You can see, you can see this box moving around. That's the footage shaking. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna turn this to zero. How careful, cause it can go into the negatives, so. No. All right. Go right before where your explosion is. Right here. Click the stopwatch on slider, make sure it's at zero. Go forward a little bit. Drag this up. Uh, let's say 16. Okay, drag up a little bit more into the explosion. Turn this up to 28. Now go a little bit further in, right to the flame. Turn this to uh, uh, zero. There you go, and there's your little shake. Now if you want for a little bit of an effect, you can make it have a camera shake. It'll be a smoother camera shake than realistic looking camera shake, but it does give it a little bit of effect. So what you can do is go right here, to the beginning of your footage, click the arrow, uh, click the arrow by effects, and where it says slider, these are your keyframes right here. So what you're gonna wanna do is make a blank keyframe right here Make sure this is blue, selected blue. Uh, make sure it's not selected, Make sure, I mean, make sure it is selected. Make sure it's not gray like this, make sure it is selected. Go to slider, turn this up to maybe about seven. This will give you a little bit of camera shake. Uh, and then at the end of your keyframe, which was your last one that you just made, go here, click this, make sure this is selected blue, turn this to seven or five, either one, just something close to it. All right, I can test this out. There you go, okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so next thing you'll need is to sell the effect is the explosion sound effect but one thing is is when this shakes you notice there is no motion blur it the footage is blurred but there's no motion blur so in order to add motion blur you'll want to make sure the this little icon down here at the bottom left this one that's blue make sure that is checked and the way you'll know if it's checked is it'll be highlighted blue if it's not it'll be gray make sure that's checked and it'll bring up these three boxes after that click the three circles and this will give it motion blur, but you won't be able to see it. So in order to see it, make sure this is highlighted blue by clicking on it. All right, as you can see right there, there's motion blur. Here it is without it. Here it is with motion blur. Without, with. You see, it makes a big difference, and it really, it really helps the uh, shake look a bit more real. All right, so now you got this. Uh, you're pretty much almost done. You want to go to project, and the way you can do that quickly is these two arrows and click project. You, next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get an explosion sound effect. So the way you can do that is go to Chrome, go to YouTube, search explosion sound effect. Uh, the top one, it doesn't matter. See if there's an explosion sound effect that you like. Okay, this has got some good ones in it. 
Now go up to your URL, copy the link, and right before, put youtube.com, but right before you put YouTube, put SS. Okay, click enter. Now right here, hold down control and click V. There you go. Now click, oh, it already loaded. So, now once it's loaded, click download. All right, and it'll download. Now once it is downloaded, put it right in your Explosion Assets folder that we made at the beginning of the video. Drag it right here. There you go, now it's in there. So what you'll wanna do next is, I like to go to Premiere, but we're gonna do this all through After Effects. So that way it's a lot it's a lot easier to uh, explain. That way this is an After Effects beginner's tutorial. All right, go to the uh, empty gray, click anywhere in the empty gray spot. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to go to your Explosion Essentials folder we made at the beginning of the video. Double click uh, the footage you downloaded off of YouTube. Now take this, put it right underneath. Now listen uh, for an explosion. Alright, so once you found your explosion, it's right there. Like you want to close. Okay, now once the explosion ends, so right here. Now in order to cut, you have to hold down control, hold down shift, and click D. Now click delete to delete the extra scrap on the keyboard. Now right here is your sound effect, so go to the beginning of the explosion. All right, close to the beginning, because I didn't cut it right as the explosion started. Drag it here. Okay, so I'll have to turn this up a little bit. So it starts about right here. Put it right as your explosion happens. Maybe just right as it happens. Frame right before it happens. Okay, there you go. There you go, okay. Now, if this doesn't seem loud enough for you, what you can do is right up here at the top right where it says audio, make sure your explosion sound effects is selected. You can raise this up a little bit. Okay, there you go, there you go. And now you are finished with your project. Now all we need to do next is render it out into a video. So in order to do that, you will have to uh, make sure nothing on here is selected. Go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. All right, now now once you're here, click Lossless. And because we do have audio, turn audio output to on. Click OK. Go right here. Now save this in your explosion assets folder that we made at the beginning of the video. Okay. All right. Now once you're here, name it. I'm gonna name it explosion video. Click save. And then click render. Alright, so once it's rendered through, you can go to your Explosion Assets folder, and you should be able to uh, view it. And if you did it all right, this is what it should look like. Okay, so thank you all for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you did enjoy this video and if it helped you out. Make sure you leave a comment uh, for other tutorials I should do in the future. And make sure to subscribe if you're new and to see other uh, other films and how-to videos and all a bunch of other film-related videos. So yeah, thank you all for watching.